Hey Greg, yeah. you know what's pretty funny is I've been editing videos. The last two that I put up, I'm pretty sure you were peeing in the background at some point or another. <laughs> the last two? Yeah. The opening is when we're doing the windows yeah. and you're out here. Yeah. So that might just be like a recurring theme, like where's Waldo, but where's Greg at? Where's he peeing at? I'm not peeing right now. <laughs> we're good. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are working on siding details now. Unfortunately, because we are still waiting on our windows and doors, we can't do a ton of siding since all those windows aren't installed. However, the garage has zero windows. We've already worked on some of the stone. We're gonna finish up the stone into this trim board, which signifies right where the door trim will eventually be. Now, we had to do a little bit of math, a little bit of calculation. We had to use a laser and a level to make sure that everything was as accurate as possible so that when we install this door, we don't say, dang it, we messed up. Now that stone has to come off because in order to do the siding, we need the stone on so that we can run the trim piece across that we need on in order to install our water screen product. So there's a lot of steps that you have to consider and a lot of things have to fall into place. And so this is the process we must do. We must install the stone, install our trim, put our water screen on, then we can start installing our vertical siding. So let's get into it. We just got our piece of base trim installed, taped off, and now we're gonna go ahead and get some stone installed. So now that we have this trim board right here, what we can do is install the stone right to the trim board, making sure that we like everything, that it's gonna look good. When the door's installed, we'll be able to put a nice piece of smart side trim and it will look like it was always there, hopefully. You know, if you guys didn't already notice, uh, gloves, beanie, uh, we got insulated pants on. It's gotten a little bit colder here in Northern Illinois. These are the TrueWork T3 work pants and we always wear TrueWorks because we love them. However, this time of year, we really love them because they're comfortable and insulated. These are, would you say, Greg, the best insulated pants though? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we've done the Carhartts, we've done, you know, Walls, we've done all these other brands of jeans. They're nice, but- like Yeah, they're nice but there is nothing compared to working outdoors in uh, a set of T3s if it's cold outside. Just a big shout out. I realized I got a brand new hoodie that I just bought. I just got this delivered. Uh, I just spent, what'd I say, Greg? <laughs> Close to 1700 bucks. Bought a bunch of gear for my, my family for Christmas. Hopefully this doesn't air before Christmas. They don't see that, otherwise they're gonna know that I did it. I actually do buy that gear and I've been rocking TrueWorks since 2000. I'd say 2016, 2017, so I guarantee it you're gonna like it. Last piece here, 29, 15, 16. All right, so what I'm doing here is installing a water screen. This is required anytime you run vertical siding over a 12 foot wall. And we're gonna be installing them, um, what's the longest, Greg, 15? Yeah, it's the 15. And this is a Benjamin Opdyke Slicker Max. And it's an added protection. It creates a void behind your siding in between your sheathing so that air and water can work its way through dry out any condensation, any moisture does go down through this and it works out the bottom. So it's a, it's a good thing. This stuff is like super lightweight, but it's just kind of awkward because you can't really stretch it. So you want to make sure that it's running right where you want it so you don't have to fix it otherwise it's going to look like garbage and all wavy kind of like kind of like that obviously the less staples the less uh, penetrations in my wall assembly here which even though we've already learned don't get affected too much grego 
You want to come up here and hold this roll? Okay, now we've got the water screen all installed here on this end wall. Really, you're just rolling this out, covering the surface. You don't want to overlap it too much. If you don't want to stretch too much, this is Benjamin Opdyke Slicker Classic. Pretty darn easy product to use. Try to keep the staples to the minimum. Now we're going to go ahead and get our first piece up at the peak, plumbed up, and then we'll work out of the peak both ways with our vertical siding. We use the laser. We got the 300 LAX 300 down here, and we've lasered from instead of having like a plumb bob we use the laser to uh, give ourselves an exact plumb line and now what we have to do is this trim right here this aluminum flashing that we made we need to stay three-eighths of an inch off of that so what we've got is a piece of smart side scrap it's three-eighths of an inch thick this will be our guide to stay three-eighths of an inch We're not gonna nail everything exactly perfect right now. We're gonna tack it all in, mainly because we've only got one siding nailer on site. So Greg is using the Pazload 16 gauge, which you can use 16 gauge for all the trims, but you don't wanna use that on the, the panel itself. We're gonna use, I think it's a 0.92 or larger exterior grade ring shank nail. And uh, that's gonna give us the holding power that we want. I'm ready when you is. You know, one thing is for sure though, I mean, you can just kind of carry smart side any way you want. It's, uh, it really is extremely durable, which I think everybody knows by now. Greg, you'll hit that middle left there kind of. And it's just lightweight too. I mean, look at this, no big deal. Lightweight Super today. white. Super light. I'm just watching this muddy hose just dangle by my face. <laughs> so uh, we're working on this barn dominium and we've been experiencing quite a few delays. Some supply issues. Clearly you guys already know about the windows and doors. We were starting to install some siding and ran into an issue with the supply on the, the remainder of our siding. So that should be resolved hopefully this week and we should be able to resume on that. But the problem is without windows and doors, we really can't go very far. So what we're gonna do is uh, behind me here, this is an opening it was just sealed off. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it open. Luckily the garage doors, the two garage doors were just stock items that I was able to pick up and we can install them. They're gonna have to be painted in the future. So don't go looking at it being like, what the heck are they installing a white door? But it allows us to run the rest of this Rosetta stone into it. And then we'll be able to run trim and siding on this entire garage. Uh, I wanna get as much done on the outside as possible, uh, but also if we have inclement weather come in, we do have the option to go inside and start framing out the interior. So from a build series perspective, from the videos that'll be coming out, it might seem kind of jumbled because that's just the way it is. We don't have a clear path uh, to move forward. It's, it's not gonna be necessarily in the exact order that I would typically like to go because we're waiting on certain things. So let's go ahead and get into this. Let's cut open this door. Let's get the door installed, trimmed, and then we can run some Versetta stone. Whoa, Greg come in clutch there, buddy. There's my morning sawdust. You know, Greg, uh, if you're looking for uh, Christmas presents for your dad, one of the things you could do is get him a set of isotunes for when he's mowing the lawn and stuff, you know? Dads love that stuff. Yeah, yeah, for when he's, he's got electric mower. Does he? But, I mean, they still make noise. You still have... True, he's, he's getting pretty old. I mean, unless he doesn't like listening to his, your mother, you well, know? If he gets to be aware, then he can still hear her. That's a good point. Be aware is, uh, 
does allow you to have safety while still hearing those you know noises around you yeah but you know once once she hits a certain decibel that's true so if she's yelling at him, yeah yeah, yeah cut he doesn't have to listen <laughs> i'm trying to provide a little bit of a uh, build up for our trims so that they're at the same plane as our battens that are going to be over top of our vertical siding so typically what i would want to do is install all of the siding on the wall then set my door flush with the siding and trim it because we have versetta stone which has to end on the trim to make it a lot easier on ourselves so we can get a nice perfect finish into that trim um, we need the doors installed first so we're going to go ahead and install this little padding here which is a 3 8 it's smart side uh, that'll bring us out to the same depth as our vertical siding we'll con we can then set our door trim it out and then have something to install our stone to all right now that i have my pieces uh, on here that are spacing out uh, the wall to the depth of my door where I want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and set my straight edge and I'm gonna mark this concrete across the face where this opening is. So where this line is, is where my threshold is gonna set and we want that to be solid and we want it to be sealed. So now that I have that defined, what I'm also going to do is run my square Let's see, we want this to be about five inches. Yeah, right about there. So we're just gonna give ourselves a scribe line. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. This is just to give us an eye, you know, reference point to where the back side of the door jam will be. We've got this double beaded butyl tape, same sort of stuff that we use on the roof. And it's got this thin channel in the middle. So what we're gonna do is line up that thin channel on the edge of the threshold and what that's going to do is when the door gets installed that threshold edge is going to cut into this butyl tape the thick part will stay on the back side and the compression will give us a nice seal on the front edge of this concrete and i'll show you what we do at the end once the door is installed um, to kind of finish this detail it's a little bit tricky to sit down because it is sticky we're just kind of pressing it into the concrete and that line that I had is what I'm trying to gauge where it sets. This piece of double beaded butyl tape is gonna stay there. We're prepping the door with a little bit of a jam extension. We extended the jam of the door so that the threshold would not be out past this concrete. I did check and make sure, specifically I always really wanna make sure that my hinge side is perfectly plumb and we are golden there. So that's always very important. All right, anytime I install a door, I always go ahead and just take myself a couple scrap pieces and I'm just going to go ahead and nail them in uh, to my face. And I'm extending them over so that the door actually stops against this and won't come out any further because I won't be up top. I'm going to be at the bottom. Greg's going to be on the inside and we're going to go ahead and set this door into place now. But first, I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of this sealant. And I'm also going to shove some kind of in this little gap down here, which will end up getting filled with spray foam, by the way. But just to prevent as much as possible. Bring your left out just a hair. Okay, yep, bring it in. Okay, take her up. Nice. Now you can see this threshold sealed right down into that butyl tape. And it's gonna be a nice solid connection because as you step on this, it's gonna compress into that and give a good seal. We'll leave it there for now, but we will come back and we'll trim it off clean right on the edge of that door. And it makes up any inconsistencies in the concrete because it is kind of thick and malleable and it will get a little bit hard over time. Now I'm gonna go back inside. Greg's gonna keep this right here for now. Um, I will check this for plumb. Yeah, it needs to go in, but we'll do all the rest of this from the inside and uh, I'll get it mounted and then we'll come back out. We'll get everything shimmed in nice and nailed. That's about right up the edge. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got the laser. We're gonna get a good idea where this goes uh, because the laser is pretty much perfect. But also what we're gonna do is take a couple blocks that I also uh, pre-cut here and we're gonna use them to install so Greg doesn't have to sit here and hold the uh, 
the door the entire time. Because remember, we have those blocks on the outside that the door is pushed against. So now this can't go anywhere. And what's kind of nice is it gives us the ability to kind of test the door, make sure it's good as we install it. Uh, and the wind is pushing this door open pretty good. Yeah, the good thing is that's a nice. That's a nice. Yeah, that we're, just, we're really good on our laser. We got good, good reveal here. So let's go ahead and shim it, screw it. And that's good. I always like to go just a little heavy mm -hmm, and then the screw is gonna suck it in a little bit. Little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull this door open. Take out one of these hinge screws and they provided me with a nice longer screw to set through into the frame. Looking pretty good there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my bottom and what I'm gonna do here is A, I'm gonna make sure that I'm flush on the outside and I'm gonna use these GRK trim screws and I'm gonna go right behind the seal on the door. So this is a hidden fastener per se. And that's how we're gonna do that. And every time I put a screw in, I'm gonna to wanna to check, make sure I like the reveals. Everything looks pretty good. Usually I just do like a three shims, top, middle, bottom for the start, make sure everything is good. And then I'll come back through and put all the, uh, all the other fasteners in. All right, so there we go. I've got the door basically, you know, where it's gonna stay. I'm gonna go around now, throw some more shims, get some more fasteners, hold it in place even better. And then uh, this door will just get closed for, for now. We'll just seal it up. I don't have doorknobs, uh, but it'll allow us to go ahead and go outside and install our stone and trims to it. What's up with this huge gap at the top? So originally when we framed this, the concrete floor was going to be flush with the top of the concrete wall so that's what we went off of it was then decided to drop the garage down an inch and then slope it to the drains which meant that our opening was an inch taller than we originally wanted to i'm not worried about it because we are using a three and a half inch trim on the outside we will tape seal it it'll get spray foamed with a foam sealant around the whole perimeter and then it'll also get trimmed and, and whatnot on the inside so it's not a big deal Yes, it's a little bit bigger than we want, but also um, we'll put some blocking in there. We'll get it all secure and it's gonna be just fine. So now that we have this door installed and this seal plate, the sill has been you know, stepped on, pushed into this tape. Now I can just take my knife, run it right across the face. And there we go. So you can see here, we got this door installed yesterday. We got rained out, so we're back this morning. We got this nice seal down at the bottom. And then we also tape sealed the edges and we're ready to put on our trim and then flash the top, get that taped back to the WRB, the weather logic. And then this will be all ready to have stone against it. All right, so with the smart side trims, um, these being five quarter, by time I put my vertical siding on and then the battens that go on the board and batten, those are also five quarter. I probably should have done a four quarter batten, uh, but I didn't want them to stick out past my trims. Hence why we padded this out the three eighths of an inch to simulate being on top of a, um, a vertical siding, which is what we normally would do. Now, typically when installing trims, I would like to Craig jig these together just so they stay on like a really nice, perfect plane um, on the face and Craig jigging will take care of that. But it's really not the end of the world here. It's, it's still gonna look, still gonna look good.
Okay, now, now that that's done, we need to properly flash it. I made these, uh, these are just like a drip cap head flashing, and this is gonna sit over the top, like so. Oh, nice, that fit, that fit perfectly. And uh, this is gonna get taped back to the Weather Logic, so any moisture will make its way over the trim instead of behind it. It's actually a nice clean detail. So what we're gonna do here is we gotta make sure that our smart side stays 3 8 of an inch above this piece. So what I like to do is mark 3 8 from a side. It's a lot harder with gloves on. These gloves are comfortable. They're not very dexterous. Dexterous? I don't think it's dexterous. I think it's dexterous. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. YouTube, let me know in the comments. Are gloves dexterous or, as Greg says, dexterous? I hope you're not right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the face of this trim off here. I'm gonna give ourselves a little wing, the 3 8 wing that's gonna stick out. And then we're gonna take our benders and we're not gonna do any other cuts. We're gonna leave them just barely off, barely off the back leg of the trim and we're just gonna do a nice bend up. And what that does is with the aluminum, it gives us a nice little uh, dam. So I'm not sure if you can see this YouTube, but it kind of closes this area off so that any water will not be able to work around, it's gonna work out over. So now that I've got the first one done, we're gonna go set this back on our trim, put it on the edge, and we're gonna go out about an eighth inch. And over here, I'm gonna mark out an eighth inch. And that's because when we run our siding, we're gonna stay off of this trim about an eighth of an inch. We'll do the same thing on this side. There. All right, now, we're gonna put this on top, make sure we got a nice even overhang both sides. Oh, these gloves, the dexteriousness of them. It's garbage. <laughs> Ooh, look at this lightweight, fully titanium hammer, man. I can't even hold these nails as the dexterity. Oh, I didn't buy it. Now that's ready to be taped off, and that door is trimmed, flash sealed. We just need a doorknob for it. But more importantly, now we're able to run this stone into this trim and know exactly where we're at, run our cap trim, and this, this section will be ready for siding, minus our soffit fascia we've got to wrap up. This kind of keeps us busy going around the whole garage. Okay, so typically you want to make sure that your stone pieces are about eight inches. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's what you should try to do. And uh, if it doesn't happen, it's, it is quite all right. I don't ever touch, I try not to touch my trim with the stone. I try to get really nice and close. So when I run these tops, what I try to do is, oh, that's a, that's gotta get cleaned off. Yeah, what I try to do is I just set them in here. That one's a little high, so we're not gonna use that there. You know, these little tips and tricks and the, you know, what, what you know is gonna work and not work is kind of something that you gain the more you do this. So I kind of learn like when I put a piece in, I kind of already know if it's gonna work or not. That right there is good. You know, I realize it is a stone. It's not going to be perfect, but I try to get it as close to perfect as possible because it makes my job easier when I'm installing my siding and everything else. What I still like to do is use screws for this process so I can move things because even if my Stabila level says it is good, 
I want it to look good because people won't be walking around with a level in their pocket. They're gonna be looking. So once I install, oops, we got runaway. Do, do we need to leave those off so they can like do like an edge or something on there? Or they're just gonna... No, cause it's low. It should be lower, it should be an inch lower. Okay. Yeah, so they, they won't even touch they won't even touch so the sir. Right They'll pour right up to it and then just yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, so you you're fine. You can do that. Yep. I was making sure like more inches. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even if my level says that these pieces are running good, which that's another good one there, I always want to visually inspect and make sure. And this is the one right here that's gonna be probably my biggest problem, and it is three foot no that is not good why is it not good it's not good because this is just over three foot now what I can do is I can install well, that was a huge one anyway I can install these and gap back like a 16th instead of being super tight on all these I can do that, and that's probably what I'm going to have to do because I'm not going to put a small piece, and I don't really want to rip down. I don't really want to rip down a uh, a small piece of this or have a partial. So we're going to go ahead and see how this plays out. So I've got a gap here that I've got to make up, and I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five pieces. So if I get a sixteenth gap in between those five pieces instead of being super tight i'll make up this little uh, quarter inch gap down here and i'll be fitting perfect uh, with a full instead of having to do two like half rips this will be way better we're just going to go ahead and slide everything down yes it does kind of stink but it's really not that big of a deal all right, that's the stone here to the door. Worked out pretty good. Um, if you're looking at this edge, seeing how bright it is, that will actually dull because right now it's got like the dust of the cut on it, which is a light color. So it will actually darken a little bit. You won't ever really see that. Uh, we did have a little bit of an issue with the capstone being about a quarter inch shy of hitting this trim. So I just worked a, a tiny gap all the way back. Now this is ready. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and nail it off with the DeWalt roofing nailer that I've actually never used for roofing uh, other than trims, but we're going to go ahead and um, nail this off. I've got to make up some new or some more of the aluminum flashings that go over top of this so we can seal it, but this is all ready now to start the siding when we get it in, which should be next week. Porch floor turned out really nice. Swanson Concrete. They do always, they always do some good work. One of the nice things, probably nothing new, but here on the edge of this porch cap, they use a little angled piece of wood. And as you can see right here, that'll give us a nice little chamfer on the bottom. Just helps with uh, the look, the detail, maybe a little bit of potential edge break when they're pulling off the forms. Got all the saw cut lines, nice. I would say that we snuck this slab in here on this porch cap just before uh, the weather gets kind of nasty. We've got, I think we've got about 72 hours above freezing before it dips into the upper 20s. So it should be good for, for curing to a point where we don't have to worry about frost at night. Um, and the big thing is that now that this porch cap is done, Greg and I can, uh, at, our, at our schedule, we can build the porches uh, in the winter time. If we wouldn't have gotten this in, we would have had to wait till springtime to build the porches, which would have really set back our schedule. So uh, we've also got, maybe you can hear behind me, we got spray foam going on in the garage. So let's go take a look at that and see how that's going. Because after today, they should be done with the spray foam. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've got Brandon here from BPI. Does all of our spray foam work. Once again, here in the garage, they're gonna be doing the entire envelope, just like we did here in the house. You can see all the window locations. And those obviously will get cut out when our windows show up. So with the spray foam here, we're gonna be doing three inches of closed cell on the walls, and then we're doing four inches on the entire ceiling. Uh, this thing is gonna be super tight. The only place where we're gonna lose some potential heat or have you know, a potential for any uh, inefficiencies will be around windows and doors, and we'll detail those later once they get installed. 